Hi everybody, Adam Steele here, and what is this? I have gone insane! Hell has frozen over. I have in fact bought myself a MacBook, having been a PC guy for many, many years. It's not only a MacBook, it's the new, brand new M2 MacBook Air, and it's arrived just in time for me to take this on tour on the road for a few days. So you'll see some footage of me trying to video edit and edit songs and use Reaper and all the plugins on here and see how I get on. So I went for the slightly more premium model, which is the one with the 10 core GPU. I don't know how much difference that makes, but, but it did come with the 512 gigabyte storage, which is uh, apparently much faster, which I'll find out soon. Right now, I'm torturing the poor thing by trying to get it to download uh, contact and a lot of instruments, all the plugin alliance plugins, Slate stuff, and Adobe Creative Cloud all at once because I need them all to be installed, so I may as well run them in parallel. And it doesn't have a fan. It's barely, it's not even warm to the touch with me holding it, which is fantastic. And it's been on charge for an hour and it's ready to go. So I'm going to stick this on install overnight and on tour tomorrow you'll see me with some uh, travel footage here we go okay so i'm back from my tour with monuments where i was doing a lot of work in the tour van and i have to say i am massively impressed with this thing that for many many reasons uh firstly it's handling everything i can throw at it which for kind of the almost the base model of what you can buy is very impressive. This is OBS 28. This came out this week. So that's the video capture software. So you can see me, hello, in the corner. Uh, but also it's capturing the entire screen. So what you can see here is Reaper and you can see an entire song's worth of work. And this is a full mix. This happily just plays it. So there you go, that's all third party plugins, that's loads of stuff from Slate there, got virtual mix racks all over the place, loads of stuff from Plugin Alliance, uh, like the Shadow Hills Class A which is quite CPU intensive, there's uh, loads of copies of Soothe from Oak Sound, uh, there's loads of Track Spacer, uh, Double Tap from Submission Audio, and as far as I know this is all Apple Silicon Native, if I'd tried this 12 months ago, uh, 18 months ago, this could have been a bit more of a nightmare because uh, not a lot of software at that point was native to Apple Silicon, but now iLock, which I have on a dongle here, it, and all the Apple Silicon plugins make this so much easier that this is barely stressing this thing, that this is, it claims it's using 17% of the CPU, and if I hit play... That's, it says now it's running about 30% of the CPU, and that is running a hundred and... How many? 123 tracks. Absolutely caked in plugins, processing, everything that I needed. The only thing that I was using that wasn't Apple native was Adapters Metric AB, which you can see at the top here, it says x86-64. So that's being natively rosetted, so to speak. Uh, but even then, I'm not using Metric AB apart from a little bit of checking. It doesn't affect the sound. It's entirely an analysis tool. So even then, it doesn't need to be on unless I want it. And so this is doing hundreds of tracks of audio and doesn't care. There's no fan in it, so it won't even spin up the fan when it gets uh, like stressed and strained, which means that I can do a heavy mix and maybe, let's say, record vocals in a room like this where there's no other noise and I won't have fan noise bleeding on. So I just have like a, a USB powered interface, the MacBook, microphone, headphones, go. And that is a really impressive thing that you can do. And because it's completely fanless, there's no risk of it kicking a fan in in between. 
And yeah, the fact that I can now natively record this through OBS and you can hear it all and see it all, uh, there's no frame drops or anything. Oh, by the way, this is currently running on battery. I didn't even plug it in yet. The charger is here. And because it overall uses so little power, it doesn't do what a lot of bigger laptops do where it'll only run at a certain kind of crippled capacity, uh, let's like say 50, 60% of the processing power when it's off mains power and then go to full power when it's on. No, it just doesn't care. It just carries on. And then when I plug it in, it starts to charge, happy days. Uh, here, I do have to have a USB A to C adapter to run the iLock, but uh, apparently now uh, the guys who make iLock Pace, they now do a USB C version, uh, which I use this mostly on PC, so I'll be sticking with this version here. Uh, but that's a nice choice if you only use devices like Macs that use USB C. I've also got my four terabyte SSD here for editing all my video off, which uh, this thing is handled beautifully. Um, if I'm using things like the screen capture, that's all uh, H.264 video, which the chip on this will natively just breeze through in Premiere. Doesn't care, absolutely steams through it. If you're using something more intensive, like this camera is using Blackmagic RAW, um, it'll still play it back at full, full frame rate in Premiere. It won't use the entire like full quality version, but it will play it back smoothly. And then when you hit render, that's when it slows down. So a 10 minute video might take me 30 minutes, 40 minutes to export. But then that's the one downside I can think of that this, this machine was never designed for like real time 4K raw video editing. And it'll still do it, or at least it'll still, it'll still allow me to jump around the timeline smoothly. And then I can render it when I know I'm not doing anything else. So it works fine. And this video you're watching right now will have been edited on the road, either in the back of a van or in a hotel room. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> no problem at all. One issue that I did find is this is a USB-C dock from Anker. And apparently a lot of USB-C docks on the M2 Max and some of the M1s as well, it can't get enough power from the M1 or M2 Mac initially. So it won't initialize, it won't start, but like this, this one, for example, has USB PD input, which means instead of the MagSafe, I could use a regular USB-C power delivery cable and power the whole MacBook through this. And if you do that, or even use just a regular power bank, then it jolts the power on this, that it kind of gets over that first initial thing and then the Mac's okay with that. If I find a software kind of work around for that in future I'll definitely use that but for now it's a bit of a workaround but I carry a little power bank with me so just a regular five volt power bank plugged into that does enough to suddenly make this work and it's got ethernet out it's got hdmi out on here so I can run a second screen or I could have a, you know something for other people to view a copy of what I'm doing or send this to something like an Elgato Camlink 4k which even that's not a big problem because I could use uh, NDI over the network with this and send the screen remotely over IP these days. So that's not even the biggest thing it used to be. So yeah, there are loads of different USB docks you can do, but do look into the power issue there. I'm sure there are workarounds that I haven't found yet. But all, all in all, I am incredibly impressed with this and I will be using it for years to come. So there you go. Is this going to be my main machine? No, it's not, uh, because I have this studio computer behind me, which has things like uh, card slots for very, very low latency, high capacity um, interfaces and all that kind of stuff. And yes, I know there's Thunderbolt, but that's already set. There's no need to replace it. And my main video editing machine is a monster that is about 10 times the size of this and draws at least 10 times as much power, which means that I can do things like edit 4K raw quickly. You know, that's something I need. Uh, but if ever I'm traveling, and I travel a lot, uh, this thing has become absolutely amazing. And if you need something that's low power, portable, not cheap, but gonna last you a long time, I think they've got there with the M2. Now, the M1 was good. The M2 is apparently faster. Yes, there are like Pro and Max versions and all that kind of stuff. But this, the battery life is bananas. So yeah, 
I can't believe I'm recommending a MacBook, but times have changed. It's no longer an Intel laptop crammed into an aluminium shell. It now is its very much own thing. So well done, Apple, for the, the Apple Silicon. It's really changed things. Hope you found this video interesting. There's another one coming up very soon where I'm going to be trying to do some audio production on this thing. I got a Steam Deck and it's a, a gaming computer for those of you who don't know, uh, but it is a handheld. Uh, you can run Linux on it. You can run Windows on it. You can use it with audio interfaces and produce music with it and play games in your spare time too. So that's something I pre-ordered this a year ago and it just so happens these have arrived in the same week, which is ridiculous. But there you go. So you'll see some uh, road footage of this soon as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.